morning, squad. Welcome back to Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show, the number one spot for everything sports talk, sports news, sports debate in the morning. We got a beautiful rundown today. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. We're going to start it off with the more developing news that's coming out of Virginia proceeding the shooting that happened Sunday that took the lives of three football players and wounded two others. We got to speak on all that news that's coming out and why we need to open up and and speak to each other across America, across the nation, a lot more after that shooting in Virginia. Then I'm going to move into, are the Dolphins the most explosive offense in the AFC? I got to touch on that. Then, seeing as the Nets lost their last two games, are the Nets missing Kyrie Irving? And to end it off, I got to touch on, will the Warriors finally get their first roll win tonight in Phoenix against the Suns? Let's get right into it, gang gang. So we have more eyewitness testimony or more eyewitness um, accounts being released. And the details that are being released is that Christopher Darnell Jones, the suspect accused of shooting and killing three football players on a University of Virginia football team, an ex-University of Virginia football player, was on a field trip with the three other players. They got back to Virginia. When the bus pulled into the, Vir- the Virginia, the University of Virginia campus, Christopher Darnell Jones stood up, said to the three football players, y'all are always messing with me and open fire on them, taking their lives. They said after the shooting, he walked or skipped off of the bus as if nothing happened. So to me, like I said yesterday, this is a clear indication that those three players were targeted, seeing that they were all juniors, uh, they were all football players. So they were probably very tight, very close friends. Um, I just, I don't even know how to wrap my head around how we continue to turn to gun violence to solve every issue in America right now. Every indifference, every every problem, every issue, every every different opinion. Like is it like the gun violence has to stop. We have to talk to our people because I don't I don't I can't even begin to think what this young man could have went through to think that the only solution was to take those three young men's lives. Like, I just don't understand how somebody can mess with you that much to where you feel as though your only resolution is to take those young men's lives. I I just don't get it. You can transfer schools. You can drop out of school. You can fight them. You can beat them up. You can do anything but to take their lives, something that can never get, it can't be, retracted it can't be reversed those young men aren't coming back there's no oh i'm i'm, I'm sorry there was a mistake i was young they can't get that back I, I i just can't wrap my head around it man like but like i said from yesterday i i, I seen it from the details that clearly he knew what he was doing and clearly the, those three football players were targeted man so once again i want to say the names of those players whose lives were taken on sunday night Lavelle Davis Jr., junior wide receiver. Devin Chandler, junior wide receiver. Deshaun Perry, junior defensive end slash linebacker. Rest well, young men, and prayers out to y'all families. Just gotta say, like I said, speak, talk, talk to, talk to your friends, talk to your kids, talk to your classmates, talk to your associates, talk to these people. There's no way nobody seen that Christopher Darnell Jones was gearing this way, was turning this way. Once people start getting dark and they start being distant from people, reach out. You get what I'm saying? Especially if they especially if they still on campus because you don't know how dark those doldrums are that they're in. Reach out. Reach out, man. And then like speak to your kids about just how to treat people man because in america right now we have a lot of mental health issues going on and like i said i'm not condoning anything that christopher darnell jones did but we've seen it time and time again where people get messed with and they come back with guns and they want to kill everybody so be careful about your actions and don't ever just think in your head it can't happen to you because be aware and just talk to each other please can we talk to each other and put the guns down Guns are for protection, not to go on the offensive. Guns are for defense, not offense. Not offense. Let's move on. I want to shift gears and focus on the NFL and the AFC. Seeing as the Dolphins are this just super surprise team, they are the number one team in the AFC East right now. Are they the most explosive offense in the AFC right now? When you look at Tua, you got Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, Jeff Wilson Jr., Raheem Mostert, man, Mike Jacecki. They just have so much talent on all levels 
of their offense. But to me, I'm going to still have to give it to, honestly, I'm going to say they're probably the fourth most explosive offense just because I have to see them do it once the lead catches up to them and once that weather really drops. Because we even seen it with the great 2007 well, no, yeah, 2007 New England Patriots offense. They were running through teams, but then as soon as it got mid-November, December, teams started catching up. Those games started getting a lot closer. You get what I'm saying? So I, I just want to see how two is going to react once it gets a little bit colder outside, once teams and defenses start catching up to what the Miami Dolphins are doing. And to me, I just got to give it to Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reid. You look at Patrick Mahomes right now, first in yards, 2,936 yards. First in touchdowns right now, 25 touchdowns, and second in QBR, 78.6. So you look at Patrick Mahomes, and if we're going to compare them or we're going to split the hairs of the offense, it's got to be splitting the hairs with the person that holds the that gets the ball every play and that's the quarterback and to me Patrick Mahomes is an, a lot more explosive quarterback than Tua Tagovailoa is and been proving it even though I got to give props to Tua Tagovailoa being 11th in yards let's not forget he missed three games 2,265 yards th third in touchdown tied for third with touchdowns with 18 touchdowns and he's first in the QBR at 82.6 but like I said you got Mike McDaniel coming over. We don't, they didn't, nobody in the league knew how he was going to utilize that speed and deploy it onto the field. So now that teams are getting some tape, they're seeing how uh, Mike McDaniel wants to use Tua Tagovailoa. He wants to deploy Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, all that speed onto the field with Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson Jr. Teams are going to start to catch up. They did it with every explosive offense we've seen. So we have to see how the Miami Dolphins, Mike McDaniel, Tua Tagovailoa are going to react once that does happen. Once that does happen. So for me, I'm going to give it to the proven commodity and Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, and Patrick Mahomes over Tua Tagovailoa and Mike McDaniel right now. We've seen Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes come back from 17 down against Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. We've seen them come from 20 down against the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. We've seen all that. You get what I'm saying? So I just got to see it from Tua Tagovailoa and Mike McDaniel. If they get down, can they come back? If if you, if you teams are coming out and they, they, they're they on top of what you're trying to do, can y'all adjust? Can y'all make the halftime adjustments? So that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. But I'm going to give it to Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs right now to still to be the most explosive offense in the AFC right now. Let's move on and shift gears to the NBA right now. And do the Brooklyn Nets miss Kyrie Irving? Kyrie Irving has been suspended for at least five games, but he's missed the last seven games. Over the last seven games, the Brooklyn Nets are four and three. But let's focus on the last two games, losing to the Lakers and the Kings, in which we expected Kyrie Irving to be back, or supposedly he was supposed to be coming back. And to me, I would say that, yes, they are missing Kyrie Irving simply because you have players speaking on this stuff they're speaking on why isn't Kyrie back why isn't he on the floor why isn't he with the team this that and the third so of course the team is missing Kyrie Irving not to mention the talent that he the talent that he brings you look at they I think they gave up 150 points last night to the Kings so if they can't go out there and be stout defensively then they need more offensive firepower and that's what Kyrie Irving brings but I do want to say this for a lot of people in defense of the punishment that Kyrie Irving has gotten is just that John Gruden just resigned last year, was forced to resign out of a contract in which I think he had 60 to $70 million left on that contract for racial, misogynistic, and anti-gay slurs that he used in a private email as the NFL was investigating the Washington football team. So it wasn't like John Gruden tweeted something out. It wasn't like John Gruden said something public. The NFL leaked this man's emails, that his private emails, through an investigation of the Washington football team in which John Gruden had no parts of and he had to resign and lost all that money. So when we look at the climate right now in our country, right now you just cannot do anything that's anti-anything, anti-Semitic, anti-black, anti-gay, anti-woman. Anti you, you can't be misogynist, you can't be none of that no more. You can't be. So if you see the writing on the wall, and like I said, with John Gruden, that was a private account. It wasn't like he tweeted something. It wasn't like he said went out there and said what Mike Ditka said when, when Colin Kaepernick kneeled and he was like, oh, well, if you don't want to play in the NFL, then go play somewhere else. No, it was a private email that was leaked. So we see the climate right now, and we need to stop sitting up here saying, like, oh, well, this person did this. That is the exact correlation with Kyrie Irving, is that John Gruden, says some racial stuff that probably shouldn't have even got released and he lost his job.
And then you look at Kyrie Irving, he reposted something that was anti-Semitic and he didn't debunk it and he didn't stand on it. Like when they came and asked him about it, and this is the thing that I wanted to say. Another thing I wanted to say, this is why they came at Kyrie Irving, but when you really sit back and you think about how they wanted to come at Cube, Cube came up there and he did an interview. That's why they backed off of Cube because Cube was like, yo, I'm not anti-Semitic. I got a problem with Jerry Hellerman. Yeah, that Jewish person, I don't bang with him, but I'm not anti-Semitic. I just said what I said in my lyrics. Kyrie Irving did none of that. Kanye did none of that. You get what I'm saying? So if you, hey, listen, I don't want to go back and forth, but clearly there's a clear correlation in right now in the climate of America that nobody, no matter what race you are, can be anti anything. They're just trying to eliminate the hate. And I'm with that. I'm, 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 I'm going to just be straight. I'm with eliminating the hate. So for me, do the Brooklyn Nets miss Kyrie Irving? Clear as day. Yes, they do. I don't know what's going on with Kyrie. I also want to bring into the point. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We don't know if the Brooklyn Nets just wanted the reason to get rid of Kyrie Irving in the first place. And now he just gave them more evidence. We don't know this. Just like I feel like with, with the NFL with John Gruden. I think the Raiders eventually was like, bro, this is not going the way we going. We got like 70 million left on your contract. Hey, we need to find something to get him out of here. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like that might be the thing was going on with the Brooklyn Nets and Kyrie Irving. They like, bro, you've been over here. You've gotten excuse after excuse to not play. And then you drop this on us. Yeah, th this might be the last straw. You feel what I'm saying? So I think the Brooklyn Nets miss Kyrie Irving. I think the players miss Kyrie Irving. I think the coaching staff misses Kyrie Irving. But I do not think that Joe Sy and Marks and, and Sean Marks miss Kyrie Irving. I think they're working to get Kyrie Irving out of there, to be honest with you. Let's move on, though. Let's move on to the game tonight that's coming on ESPN T on primetime ESPN of the Golden State Warriors at the Phoenix Suns. And will the Golden State Warriors get their first road win of the season tonight? I'm going to say yes, because they just absolutely have to. Over the past few years, the Phoenix Suns have been the top team in the Western Conference. Last year, they were supposed to be the number one foe to the Golden State Warriors, or the Warriors were the number one contender or the number one challenger to the Phoenix Suns, seeing as they won the Western Conference two years ago. And then you come out, you get blasted in the first game, 134 to 105 in Phoenix. This is the last game that you'll have in Phoenix. So I think the Warriors will come out wanting this game and treating this game like it's a playoff game. So to me, this will show a lot about where the Warriors are heading right now because I think they need this game. They have to come out there. They have to make a statement against a, a top-tier opponent on the road. So I see the Warriors coming out. I see a huge game from Steph Curry, but I see Andrew Wiggins probably being the difference maker, making it tough on Devin Booker. And then I don't think that the Phoenix Suns can really take advantage of the Warriors' biggest weak spot because I don't think DeAndre Aiden is that much of an offensive threat down low in the low post. So I see the Warriors coming out with a big, huge win. I'm going to say... 116 to 104, 116 to 104 Golden State Warriors over the Phoenix Suns in Phoenix, Arizona. Let me know what y'all think though. What do y'all feel on the, the more developing details that's coming out after the shooting that happened at the University of Virginia that took three players' lives, three football players' lives? Are the Dolphins the most explosive offense in the AFC or the NFL just in general? Do the Brooklyn Nets miss Kyrie Irving? And Will the Warriors get their first road win tonight against the Phoenix Suns in Phoenix? Let me know what y'all think. This is Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show. Like, comment, share, subscribe, listen, alert. Mizzy World Entertainment. Gang.